Happy Good Friday, Pat. Thank you. The talk does continue right here on the Morning Scramble, right here on AZTV. Thank you for finding us and being our audience co-host today, Dr. David Hancock. Always fun being here. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, typically on Friday, uh, he pretty much co-hosts or is a guest. I know. We're getting to be a regular. I love it. <laughs> with us right now, we're going to be talking about the 26th Annual Diabetes Seminar. And with us, we have Joan Seff and Jake Seff. And we also have Quake, who is Jake's assistant dog. Assistance dog. Thank you for being here. That, service dog? Is that, service dog. Is that all interchangeable? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. So assistance is correct. You sent us, but service? Either word will yeah. work? Either word will work. Excellent. Uh, Joan, a little bit about Jake, and I believe he was diagnosed at age six yeah. with type 1 diabetes, uh, which is used to be juvenile diabetes, but now it's type 1. Correct. He was in kindergarten and, and just showed all the symptoms, took him to the doctor, and diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. We had to learn a lot about it really quick. Is there a history of it in your family? No. No. There is. It, Type 1 diabetes, there is no hereditary. It's all just luck of the draw. Any get... milk allergies? Nope. Interesting. Uh, when I was younger, that was Yeah, when he was young, yeah, he was allergic to um, milk, and we had to put him on special formula, so. And there's a connection there, that's why I asked. Okay. That. Yeah, there's 17 amino acids in milk that are identically reproduced in the same sequence in the beta cells of the pancreas. Interesting. So if you have a milk allergy, the body attacks the milk and then looks for anything that looks like that can take out the beta cells. So insulin. Wow. You're familiar with insulin? Yeah. <laughs> Daily? Yeah. Okay, uh, you administer yourself? Yes, I've, I have an insulin pump and I've been using that for three or four years. Yep. What a man, that's awesome. Is it, a, is it like a needle thing? Is it a shot, is it a? It's a catheter that goes into your skin oh, and okay. it's got a little plastic tubing that goes under the skin and uh -huh. injects insulin. So is it automated then, or do you have to? I have to push buttons on my pump, and it delivers the insulin through a tube and into the. So body. how often do you ch do you check your blood sugar so you know? Eight to ten times a day. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That now is that with a finger prick? Is that how you yes. do that? Okay. Joan, uh, in speaking of diabetes, right now uh, there is no optimum time to have diabetes, but there are emerging breakthroughs daily on diabetes now. Yes. And uh, I know you're seeing that with Jake, obviously, because I'm, I'm sure you are informed daily of what's happening in the diabetes world. Uh, some of the breakthroughs that we're seeing right now, uh, optimum breakthroughs, optimism good? Optimism's great. In Jake's lifetime, optimism is real good. We're looking at uh, probably, what are they telling you in his lifetime? Oh, you know, there's so many things out there on the market they're trying, the smart insulin and, and the continuous glucose monitors, and it's just making diabetes a lot easier for him to live with. And living with diabetes has it changed? It probably hasn't. Looking at you, I can tell it hasn't changed the way you act at school, interact, sports, anything. No. Hasn't changed your life at all. I can just sense that from you. Yeah, I've still been a normal kid, had played sports, and had fun. Do no. you, go ahead, Doctor. I'm just going to ask, do you have Quake with you? Can we get Quake on cameras? Because I want to see the dog. She's adorable. I mean, you guys are great, but I love animals. <laughs> now, she's not a family, she's a working dog. That, yes. We were very quick to say that on our information. Go ahead, Now, Jake. is that in anticipation of a diabetic coma that she pitches in, jumps in, and... Well, she will alert me if my blood sugar goes high or low. And she can tell 15 to minutes to half an hour before I actually go high or low. Wow. Yeah. Now, okay. She actually alerted last night. Um, she couldn't wake Jake up, so she jumped out of his bed, came over and got right in my face, woke me up, and yeah. I got up and tested Jake, and he was high. We had ice cream last How night. How are you trying a dog to do that? Well, you, need, you need blood work to do that, and the dog well, sniffs it? Actually, what it is, is you take a little, like, medicine jar with a cotton ball in it, and then you spit oh. in it and freeze it. And when you're high or low, it gives off a scent, which they train them to smell that scent and recognize it. Yeah. Power and so pause. the body gives it off, and he, yeah. he sniffs it from your body. So he senses yeah. the high yeah. and low. Yeah. And, and Jake still has to train. Power Paws is Scottsdale. They're the ones that we got Quake from, and every day, five minutes of training just to keep her up on it. Uh, Joan and Jake, uh, please stay with us because right after the break, more about the 26th Annual Diabetes Seminar. Talking about that, we have Joan and her son Jeff. You stay right there. <laughs> 